NLPTA Global Community, Rodney Corn here. Thanks for joining us. What I'd like to do today is complete the triangulation component for our Up Close and Personal series. So I want to take some time and just wrap up the whole triangulation series, go through a few key components, and bring to life what triangulation is, how it can impact you as a trainer and or a person in the health and fitness industry. So if it's okay, I'd like to run through and start off with a recap of what triangulation is. So very simply, triangulation is three major components. It is direction of movement. So which direction or plane of motion? Forward, backward, side to side, rotation. So think of it as your three planes of motion. It is also the height of motion. So it's how high I move relative to my body, the height of motion. And it is distance of motion, so distance relative to my body, the distance away that I travel. So think of it as horizontal. And what this becomes is your bubble. And if you're standing, I just want you to simply go through and create a tangible so you can see in your mind's eye. It is direction of movement, so it's forward and backward. It's side to side. Go ahead and move with me. Side to side, forward to back. It is rotation. Those are my directions. It is height of motion. So reach your hands above your head as high as you can go. And go all the way down to the floor. That is the verticality of my bubble. And it's the distance out from my body that I can travel. That is the horizontal component of my bubble. So now if you just move around, this is your bubble. So this is all your space. As Gary Gray would put it, it's your sphere of function. Your sphere, three-dimensional bubble, three-dimensional circle of function. It is the operation system for every movement that you perform. And that's why, hopefully you see, how it is so vitally important. It now becomes, quite simply, your movement bubble. The question is, what does it do for me? And what, what do I need to know this for? And, and how do I use this particular information, okay? Great question. What this becomes is a simple system. It's actually a mini system within our larger system that we call 3D checkpoints. So it's one of the very simple systems that you can use to manipulate exercise. It is a way that you can progress and regress any movement that you perform. Now let me take you to an example. So if you're still standing, thank you. If you're not, please stand back up. And here's what it looks like. I'm going to ask you a very simple question. I'm going to say, would you please perform for me a lunge? So if you would now, please perform a lunge. Thank you. Now, based upon my observation, and our observation as a PTA Global team over the last year teaching this, what we probably saw from you was something that looked like this. Because in our mind's eye, that's what a lunge is. We have been taught that a lunge is something. It looks like this. Just as we are taught exercises throughout our life, Shoulder press is this, a squat is this, a lunge is this. So the definition of a lunge is simply a step and return. That's the definition of a lunge that we at PTA Global use based upon the Green Institute nomenclature. But if I now take the concepts that I know of triangulation and apply them to the lunge, here's what we get. So let's take direction. So just taking the direction where my plane of motion I can lunge forward, I can lunge at a diagonal, I can lunge lateral, I can lunge posterior lateral, and I can lunge posterior. I can lunge in rotation to a variety of different degrees on my 360 degree direction map. So now I don't just have to lunge forward, but I can lunge slightly off center, I can lunge more off center, I can lunge more off center, I can go more lateral, and you see how that works. Or I can rotate to a position.
position in the transverse plane. Okay? So that's the direction component. Now let's take the height component to a lunge. I can lunge at different heights. So let's just say I take a lunge, the typical lunge we did, and I went here. Well, I can go out the same distance, but I can stay up higher. I can go out the same distance and go just a little bit lower, or I can go the same distance and go all the way down. So I have different heights that I can lunge to. I can lunge up high, I can lunge a little bit lower, and I can lunge as low as I can go. So the distance can now be, if I'm just traveling forward, I can go initial range of motion. So very simple. I can go initial range of motion with different heights. I can go anterior, more of a mid-range of motion, at different heights. And I can go in range of motion at different heights. So you see how all of those work. I can go lateral, staying up high. I can go lateral farther. I can go lateral in range of motion. High, medium, low for a caliber. Initial, mid, end range, horizontal. And that's just using threes as my components or my breakdown of the verticality and the distance. Okay? So I can use three directions, forward, backward, side to side, rotation. I can use three heights, tall, moderate, low. I can use three distances, initial, mid, and in range. So all of those now turn a lunge into whatever I want it to be. Initial, low, initial, or mid, moderate, mid, low, do I want to rotate mid-high, do I want to rotate initial high, do I want to rotate initial, or in range of motion, sorry, low, any of those become useful. So triangulation is your sphere of function, and the sphere, the size of the sphere, is dictated by obviously the client and many factors that we won't get into here. But triangulation allows me to take an exercise that we've been told looks like this and expand it, reshape it, organize it to help us manipulate it, progress it or regress it, make it more challenging or less challenging.